Hi guys, Jambo, Habari, how are you? In this session, we're going to do introduction to vectors. So after this, there will be two or three more videos on vectors. So I hope you listen carefully uh, in this session today so that when I do the next sessions, it will all be easy. Right, so let's start this session. So what are vectors then? Well, we can start by defining a scalar quantity first, which is simply anything in life that can be described by just a number. For example, height, temperature, age, maybe amount of money, and so on. So these are just uh, items with quantities. Well, a vector is a quantity that needs a direction for it to make sense. So on top of having a quantity, we need to have a direction. So vectors have both magnitude, so in size, and direction. Examples then. We can have velocity. Well, velocity has speed and direction. You could say wind velocity is 15 kilometers per hour east. So we have magnitude in terms of velocity and we have direction. Other examples that are vectors are acceleration, simply because we have velocity in there. Momentum, again, we have velocity in there. Displacement. When we talk about dis displacement, uh, we're talking about distance in a certain direction and force has direction. So we can simply say really vectors are directed quantities. So how do we represent vectors then? Well, we can have them as straight lines like this, but we must put an arrow. Why? Because they have direction. So if you're going to draw a straight line, you must include an arrow. So you've got to show the direction and then that arrow will show you the magnitude of that vector. We can write them as column vectors. So you will see them sometime like this for one. This is called a column vector. And what this actually shows is that the top number is the movement in the x direction, left or right. The bottom number is the movement in the y direction, vertical movement, up or down. So if I write for one, it means I'm going four steps to the right and one step up. So this is y. We must always write them in this way. That top number must always represent the horizontal movement. All right, so we can show it like that. We've gone four to the right and one up. And the vector itself is what is shown over here. So that will be your vector then. If you want to find the size of this vector, you can easily use the Pythagoras theorem. So let's say this is vector a, then vector a is just simply going to be the square root of 4 squared plus 1 squared. Well, at this point, I just want to show you what this is like. We're not doing any calculations. So we have certain notation uh, that we use to represent vectors then. Well, we have, we can write them. If this is our vector AB, we need to write AB and we must have an arrow because that shows the direction of the vector. Because I could simply write AB and have that arrow, which means is this AB is going in the opposite direction. So you can't just write it as AB. You must have an arrow on top. And sometimes you will find them as bold letter because if they are typed in a textbook, then uh, it's not easy to get this small line underneath like there. 
So in a textbook, you probably see them as bold letters. And when written, handwritten, we try to use a letter and a line underneath to distinguish from other uh, text. Okay, so that's your vector AB. Then you could write this as bold letter or you could write like that. Now we're going into resultants. So the resultant is a single vector, which is equivalent to a set of vectors. So let's say I have a vector A, which is going in this direction, and I have a vector B, which is going in this direction. And if I want a resultant vector, then I can join it like that, and I could call it C. So C is my resultant vector. So I could write C as equal to, we must follow the path. Vectors is all about pathways. You can't just say, why can't I just go there? No, you have to follow the pathways. We have to go that way. So that's going to be equal to A and then coming down this way and we're going in the same direction. So that's plus B. Again, this is just an introduction. We will do a lot more in the next video. And properties of vectors. So if different size vectors have the same direction, we say there are scalar multiples of each other. And in fact, we say there are parallel vectors. So for example, that's 2a, and this would be a. So these are multiple of each other, and we therefore say there are parallel vectors. So there's a lot more to come on that as well, probably on one of the last video. Now here's a confusing one for most students. What is a position vector? You hear it sometimes, a position vector OA, OB, OC. What is it? Well, if I say a position vector, let's say OA, like that, is equal to, let's say, uh, 3, and I'm going to make it 2 because I haven't got enough space on my graph. Let's say it's 2, 1. What does this mean? It's a vector simply that starts from the origin. It shows the position of something in relation to the origin. Okay, so vector, position vector or A is 2, 1. All I have to do, remember the top number is horizontal movement. The bottom number is a vertical mov movement. They are both positive. So I'm going two to the right and one up, which is just right there. And then I can draw in my vector in that direction. And I can put my A there. So that is it. That is vector OA. If you want to find the size of this one, all you have to do is do the Pythagoras theorem by taking this triangle. How about if we have a vector, let's say position uh, vector OB, okay? And that is, let's say, equal to negative one and let's say three. What does this mean? Well, simply it's just going one to the left because it's negative and three up. So we're going to represent this position vector over here. So we've got negative one and then three up. So it's going to be somewhere there. And now because it's a position vector, we're going to go and join it there. And then we must include our arrow. So that is a position vector. OB, you must label it. So let's do some light exercise, guys. We have these vectors here, and we need to say the value of each vector. So vector A, what's that going to be equal to? Well, we're going to write them as column vector. So A, it went one to the right, so that's positive, and three up. So I'm going to write one, and three. 
vector B, so you can put your lines if you like, and B, what did happen? One, two, three, four, five, and one up. So because it went right, we say is positive, so five and one up. So if it's up, is positive. Vector C, what happened to vector C? What is it? Okay, so what happened? Well, it went two to the right, so one, two, and then three down. So it went in a positive sense in the horizontal movement. So we need two over here, but then it went down. So we need a negative three here. Guys, you can pause the video and then have a go and then come back and check the answers. So let's do D. Okay. D. What happened to D? Well, we can see it's going to the left from where it started. The arrow is going that way. So one, two, three, four left, two up. Four left is negative. Four and two up. So this is vector D. Right, so let's finish off. E is going to be equal to, well, you can see it's gone down and it went left. So let's count the horizontal movement first. So from there, one, two, three, four. So four left. Let me write that. So it's negative four. And then from there, it went down. One, two, three, four. Again, because it went down is a negative movement in the y direction. So vector f, so I keep forgetting these lines. Um, f, what happened to f? Well, it went left and then up, both one. So one left, one up. So negative one and one. And the last one, G. So what happened to G? We need our brackets. It, we can see it went all the way down. Right, right down, no left, no right. What does that mean? There is no movement in the horizontal direction or in the X direction. So we're just going to put zero. And it went down one, two, three. So that is negative three because it went down. Now, guys, remember these are vectors. Okay, so you must not write them as fraction. So you can't just say, oh, three over two. This will not be vector. This will not represent vector. Okay, let's do the next small exercise. All right, we need to draw vectors from point C. So this is my point C. And I'm going to just make something up. So let's say vector A is equal to um, 3, 2 from point from where my x is. So I'm going to call this is point C. That's what I'm told. So A then, 3, that means it is positive movement in the x direction and 2 up. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, and then 2 up. So from there, 1, 2. So that vector is going to be right there. I must show the arrow. So that is my vector, guys. Next question. What sh where should we go this time? Well, I'm going to say vector A is equal to uh, negative 2 and I will say 5. Okay, what does this mean from my point C? So negative 2, it went 2 left and 5 up because it's a positive there. So 1, 2, 3, 4 right there. So I'm going to draw in my vector and with direction. So that is a vector negative two, five. Right, so for the last example then, we're going to go 
in the negative sense in both direction okay so let's try that we're going to go negative 2 and negative 3 I want to show this vector so this is my point C negative 2 I need to go 2 left negative 3 I need to go 3 down after that so 2 left from C 1 2 and then 3 down 1 2 3 so I'm going to end up right there and I must include my arrow so that is the vector a guys all right guys this is the end of this session I hope you understand a little bit of vectors so in the next session we're going to do addition we're going to do some simple example on position vectors and resultants and so on and then we probably have one more uh, difficult one with geometry one more video and so on hope you enjoy the video guys remember to like and subscribe and bye for now